What's up everybody, this is Scratch and I got a video here for you. We're gonna take a look at the streaming properties or the streaming qualities or just streaming in general with the Record Central 3 um, software by Evermedia and then of course using the Live Gamer Portable 2 that Evermedia was kind enough to send over to me. Uh, we used all of their stuff. I tried to do it as basic as possible to um, basically limit uh, what a gamer would need to purchase. Um, although I do have my green screen and I do have the lights, but you could put a little box with just a camera. So if you want to have a camera, you got to have a camera. But we're going to specifically take a look at the gameplay. I used my um, Astro A40's headset as the microphone uh, to kind of give you the full view um, to see what you can do with this product without having to go like, you know, all in on a whole bunch of streaming equipment and things like that. So we're going to take a look at it. I will have a full review up on the YouTube channel if it's not already here and then it will reference um, all of the videos in the playlist because we've done several tests up to this point so if you haven't checked those out uh, you might want to jump over and just look at them we've done some uh, we were going to do the live streaming here we've done some local recording um, and unboxing and that sort of thing so thanks for watching let's just jump over and we'll talk about live streaming with Evermedia's Live Gamer Portable 2. Okay, so this is taking a look at the Rec Central or Record Central. This is the software for capturing and streaming with a Live Gamer Portable 2, and this is what you'll use with all of Avermedia's hardware uh, to capture and record should you choose to not uh, purchase XSplit or download OBS, uh, which are a little bit more advanced, but this is basically um, a software that is much more... Uh, I would say user friendly. It's a little bit easier to kind of get around and understand if you're not really sure um, how everything works. Uh, this kind of makes it simple. And we're just going to kind of go over some of the features and then I'll end off with uh, some gameplay. This is going to be just a very high level overview. If you guys have questions or want me to go more in depth, um, I'd be happy to do that. But I'm just going to do a quick overview here, just a couple of minutes uh, before we get to that gameplay. So basically here you can see where your video input is and you have the quality uh, that you're going. You've got your device audio. You can do some settings here um, to adjust the different uh, audio headset and your controller depending on if you plug into the front ports or not. You can use external audio. Um, you have your recording quality where you can go here and you have these presets or you can uh, customize them uh, to whatever you want. If I select custom you can see here I have different options to change you know the resolution the keyframes uh, so you have all of that available to you there uh, Kodak you can select the game genre it does have a live editing in which you can enable or disable that um, uh, basically what that does is it, it creates like a rolling edit so even though you're not recording it's recording to like a temporary file that you can uh, basically you know search and jump around I can't actually show you exactly how that works because I can't record my desktop and do it because it does not play nice with uh, XSplit running at the same time uh, probably because they want to share resources on the computer or whatever but it's there and it works um, a lot of this is very similar to the Elgato software um, one big difference I would notice is I would know is that the Elgato software has a lot of settings like this already available like in your view so you don't have to click on anything you kind of get a, a, a command and control central look um, at everything that's here without having to click on settings um, or anything like that uh, for example instead of selecting um, you know the different uh, recording qualities there's just dials that you can turn up and down so the interface is a little bit different but all of the same uh, all of the same controls are there just they just interface just a little bit differently I do sort of prefer the Elgato a little bit, but that's mainly because Probably mainly because I use it the most um, But it doesn't mean I have any less ability here and obviously that could be fixed with any sort of uh, Any sort of software update or whatever. It's not necessarily a limitation of anything It's just the way it's presented currently now to stream it's actually pretty easy. You can set up your streaming platform. You click on stream over here uh, so you can turn that on and then you just set up your profiles. You can see here I just have uh, the Twitch on here. If I wanted to add one, oops, we'll cancel that out and I want to quit that. If I wanted to add one, um, I can go here and you can see all of these are available here. So you have everything you need uh, to stream depending on what platform you're using and then you can set your uh, settings here most places are going to be like a three megabytes per second 
um, is what they'll let you upload with 720p 30 frames per second if you start going higher than that you can have uh, quality problems on the stream end even though it's a really really high quality for uh, say saving it like on a record quality I might record at say 30 I personally use like between 12 and 15 when I upload to YouTube and those are pretty pretty high quality for YouTube you don't need to go much more than that um, otherwise you're starting to use up a lot of hard drive space but for streaming you usually have to go way lower uh, than I would like to but that's in order to make the stream the health of the stream good because if you stream at too high of a bitrate or too high of a resolution or whatever uh, the streaming protocols don't really play nice with it and you start to get you know choppy tiling freezing people have to refresh all the time and stuff so generally streaming is way way lower uh, than what you would record at typically one thing you'll notice here is that there is enable video backup uh, which is nice because that will record a copy of the stream to your hard drive which is really really useful uh, because sometimes you know you can go back and you can get a copy of the stream without having to download the video on demand or uh, fighting the different quality and things it'll save it'll save a backup of your video exactly at the quality that you stream at so that's pretty good uh, with the exception of the Elgato software will actually record at the highest possible quality and then stream at a lower quality which for me is a little bit of a showstopper because being able to have a high quality copy of my low quality stream or lower quality stream um, is is important because uploading later to YouTube it's nice to have the highest possible quality to be able to upload an archive uh, to YouTube whereas pulling them off from the temporary streaming platform you have such a, a lower quality um, sometimes you know you'll get like different you know artifacts and tiling and fuzziness depending on how your network was operating at the time so that is one drawback to this one versus the Elgato software but that could just be either I don't know if that's a hardware limitation as much as it's a limitation of just the way the software is designed but it's definitely something that could be looked into or changed um, to cap it off here you also have the ability to do a stream scene for example uh, where you can click on that and you can add a camera uh, you can add pictures you can come down here and you can add things like web pages and video um, and text overlays to you know kind of pretty up and and fill out your fill out your scenes and then while you're recording you can switch between these uh, right here so this is the like away scene and then if you were just going to be talking to people like maybe you click on this one where it puts your gameplay uh, you know in a smaller window like if you're addressing your audience so you have a little bit of options here to uh, a few options here to sort of you know up your production value a little bit uh, which is nice right within this software so if you're new to streaming or if you're new to capturing uh, Evermedia has made it pretty easy to kind of jump in at an entry level sort of a place or if you get a little bit higher ended and you get a little bit more uh, familiar with how things work it also supports you know some of the more things that advanced streamers would look for I think for most people um, for a lot of people this is really all you'll ever need um, it is nice to be able to jump in with all of the other stuff that you can do like say an OBS or XSplit or something like that but uh, for most people who are just streaming um, or just recording content this is going to do more than more than you'll need uh, for at least a while until you get um, really really good at it and then when you start tinkering you might want to move up from it but uh, I think for the most part it has uh, super high quality one thing it does do uh, when you're recording is you can record up to 60 megabytes per second uh, for a bit rate at 60 frames or 60 frames per second um, you know at a 1080p resolution so that's really really good that is exact same uh, video quality that you're gonna get out of an Elgato so I think as far as between the two go there's just those two limitations that the Elgato seems to do just a tad bit better for now but I don't think that it's something that would limit me or stop me from looking at Avermedia as a serious option uh, between the two especially when you come down to price and stuff like that we will talk about more about all of this in the review in the final review and I'll give you my final impressions of it but for right now I just want to jump over and we'll take a look at some of the gameplay that I created uh, this gameplay was streamed onto beam using these settings right here um, 720p at 30 frames per second and I was streaming at 3 megabytes per second 
uh, with an audio bitrate of 96 kilobytes per second and I use the video backup to grab that video uh, that I'm going to tack on here at the end so I'll put a couple of uh, I'll put a couple of uh, game clips in there so you guys can take a look at the quality of that and kind of see how it is. I think you'll be uh, impressed with it. I think I, I personally was impressed with it. I thought it, I thought it did very, very well um, on this quality, and I was, I was happy with it. And I'd be happy to share it, although I do just wish there was an option to have just a, a little bit higher quality backup. But I'm not going to fault it. Um, most things don't do that either. So even XSplit and stuff and OBS doesn't do that. Only the Elgato, I think, does it right now. So um, hopefully that's the way of the future, though. So here's the gameplay. Thanks for watching. And be sure and check out the rest of the videos that are in the playlist here for the Avermedia uh, for the Live Gamer Portable 2. If you guys want to check out all of that stuff, it's all right in here in the playlist, and I'm going to be referencing these videos in my review. So if you want to get the full picture, be sure and check all those out. Leave me questions, comments, or anything down below, and I'll be more than happy to answer it, make a video, do some tests um, for you. If you're considering a purchase, I'd be more than happy to check some stuff out for you or answer some questions. So without further ado or further delay or further starting over closing out, here's the gameplay. See, I have a real depth perception problem here. And I don't think I'm going to catch him now. Glad to see you here. Appreciate it. Why did you go back for those? <laughs> well, I have to have those, so there's like no... There's no choice. Well, he just blew. He just blew past you there. I know. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I said... You should stream that. And you said, yeah, I worked from home Thursday, so you can stream at work. Wednesday, yeah. <laughs> I work from home, and I, on my lunch, I can do whatever I want, right? Oh, gotcha, so gotcha, I gotcha. <laughs> I was like, cool, I want your job, but I get it. You're on lunch. <laughs> yeah. That's cool, though. Taking a break. I had a few people come by. Yeah, uh, it, was, I, it was like. Oh yeah, I remember that. Early. I hope no one from work is watching. I didn't realize you got like a four-hour lunch break. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not true. That's not true. People at his work. I'm only kidding. I'm just, I'm just gonna get fired already. <laughs> penguin quit or a penguin quit Outlast two in in ten minutes. Wow. Is it that scary? Um. Should I try it? I should Chelsea try it. Did a review about it, and he he has this nice clip. Oh jumped, look! I I it's me, the amazing <laughs> health extender. Awesome! I just got a health extension. <laughs> 